Hi, everyone. Welcome to CRO's React to this week's edition, or this month's edition, rather. And this is product pages, uh, the good, the bad, and the clunky. Uh, so I'm going to introduce myself, and everyone else will introduce themselves. My name's Joe. I'm the head of conversion at Launch. And um, my most recent online purchase experience that I really enjoyed was um, with Finisterre. Uh, bought some end of sale, end of season sale items from there. I love the website, and uh, yeah, definitely a fan of their website. And I'll hand over to Josh. Hello, um, I'm Josh. I'm a senior paid media manager at Launch, um, but I also work um, in the CRO team as well. Um, my ooh, my most recent purchase that I liked, well, I enjoyed the experience of probably. Probably would be buying a T-shirt from the Cats Protection website, um, more so because I love cats. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. That's good. Uh, That's a good driver there, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Amy. I'm a senior conversion executive at Launch. Um, I am a bit of a creature of habit, so my general favourite shopping experience online um it's quite often asos um i use the app and it's very handy it remembers all my details um and i can purchase in a couple clicks which is nice and easy for me mm. very cool all right so we're going to introduce briefly the format of this video and then we'll crack on into our favorite websites that we've seen recently so this is a new um a new type of uh, webinar that we're recording and it's essentially our thoughts on some websites that we've come across recently uh, in our work and it's going to be pre-recorded so this isn't live um, but we would love to hear from you for the next recording so we're going to try and do these monthly and uh, so we're very keen to hear from you about which kinds of pages you want us to look at but also if you have any specific websites that you'd like us to look at. We'd love to hear from you. So please, please mention in the comments if there's something that you would like us to do. So today we've got three websites that we're going to look at, one each, and we're going to look um, specifically at product pages from three different websites. And we're going to look at what we like about them and what we think could be interesting to test about them as well. Um, but before we jump into that, I'd like to introduce you our six conversion principles. So uh, those are, we have six of them, and we use these quite regularly for uh, all of our websites that we review here at launch. Uh, the first one is relevance, and this is around making sure that this page makes sense for the user's priorities and their pains as well. The second one is clarity. Is it clear what the user has to do on the site, and is it immediately obvious? The third one, differentiation, and this is around um, USPs, really, can you tell what makes you different from the competitors? Number four, proposition. Are you quickly communicating what makes you valuable in terms of your service and your offering? Number five, trust. Um, are you offering the users any reassurance? And number six, value. Do they feel like they are incentivized to act now instead of tomorrow? So these are general guiding principles. Uh, as always, there are exceptions to the rule. So we won't always say that these apply to every website, but we might reference them um, when they come up and they're relevant. So that leads me on to our first website that we're going to look at. And the first one uh, is actually for Josh to look at. This was his pick. And uh, it is harrypottershop.co.uk. And so I'll accept cookies, Josh, and then I'll... Um, Cool. Leave it up to you. You can direct me to as where you'd like me to, to go on the page. Um, cool, cool. I think to start, it's probably best to give a little bit of context about why I picked this website. <laughs> um, <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, Huge Potter fan. Um, as much as I, I do enjoy the Harry Potter films, particularly the later ones, actually, um, I recently bought something from this website because my niece has recently discovered Harry Potter and is really into it. So I bought her like a wizard card, which is really cool, by the way. Um, so, but what I, I it was just a memorable, <laughs> a memorable experience shopping. Like, isn't it just stuck with me? Like some of the stuff about the website, um, and obviously a few things we'll go through now. But yeah, it just really stuck with me, which is isn't always the case when, <laughs> when you're buying something. Um, so I starting here, I guess. 
to start with, like a couple of things that I think are good about this as a product page. Um, it is very concise, like top top to bottom. There's not a whole low going on to take you away from the product. Like you've literally got, like yeah, if you scroll down a little bit, Joe, like you've literally got product info. You may also like. Oh wow, you're already in the footer. There you go. That's what I mean. It's super mm -hmm. like condensed, right? There's not mm -hmm. loads there, um, which generally I'd say is like a, a good thing on a product page. Like you you don't want too much taken away from the product itself right so like that i like about it i mean it, so in terms of i guess like simplicity like great in that sense but there's a few things that i just find like interesting about the design of the page um one being and i think they've obviously made a real effort to sing and dance about the fact you can personalize it which is again good from a like keeps it clear that that's what they want you to do but in that like kind of there's a section of that page where you've got the personalized message you've then got personalized written underneath the cost um and i think an interesting decision here is if you click that link joe yeah it's loading yeah, it wants um, to, okay there we go it takes you off that page Mm. Uh, mm. and to a essentially like a category page right, uh, right. which i, I see another it, personalized link on the product page as well directly underneath this one but then it just that's the page we were just looking yeah, at. yeah so that's that's where you'd get to the product from so that's mm. like a i don't mm. i don't get the logic on that one which yeah. is and then yeah that. like you you right, Amy. Like beneath that, there's the actual personalization link for like personalizing this yeah. product. Yeah. Um, which I just think could be a little bit yeah. confusing about what I'm actually doing. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, Joe, like if you go on the personalization, yeah. And if you just type in a name. Obviously, Joe. Good, good, good. <laughs> you played it quite safe there, I'd say, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not hinting anything. Is like, my birthday coming up in January? Just saying. <laughs> if you if you press like, and I was just messing around like with the website. If you just press enter, to see what yeah. you've done. Like, boom! That is in the cart. And it's mm. an interesting way of doing it, where like it just gives you the little tick to say it's gone. Now the cart button's gone. Yeah, a nice little like, micro animation yeah. there. Yeah, it's an interesting way of doing it, right? Like it's a little bit yeah. different. Um I just I wonder if for some people that'd be a little bit like, oh, okay. Because you can't yeah. see the basket yeah. visibly, like from this bit, because it's right on the top of the website. I wonder if, yeah. if people would be like, Oh, okay, what like yeah. have I just personalized it? Has it been added? Like, do you know I what I mean? That, like, yeah, potentially it's too subtle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, do you actually want like an this has been added to your basket message there or do you know i think it's a nice yeah. idea but i just don't know whether some people think okay that step's done that now i need to add it to cart type yeah. of thing yeah. yeah or even maybe you know an option to just remove it from the cart yeah which i can't see here without having to navigate away from the page again and enter the basket yeah um, yeah yeah agree 100 yeah. percent um the other things I thought, like, yeah, like, you found the images there. Like, I thought it's good that there's, like, a a bit, a, well, a few images, like, a bit of an array. I wasn't a huge fan of the zoom on the image. Like, if you scroll over it, like, it's... That's a bit clunky. Yeah. That was that was the word I had written down, actually, was, was clunky for that. <laughs> nice. It's also the title of the talk, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> One thing, this is a bit of a spoiler, actually, for the website i'm about to look at but um there is a really cool feature that they use which is essentially like a 360 review option where you can see every aspect of the but it's not a video it's more of like a um just lots of still images that make it give the impression that it's a 360 uh, yeah. review, which i think would work so well here and would allow you yeah. to get a proper look at what it's the detailing of it you know i think it needs like the zoom thing i think it needs and yeah. this because like the detail on the products and stuff so i think like, i completely get the logic of it it's just the way it works is a little bit yeah the functionality of it's a little bit messy yeah um yeah. we might have to sadly move on very shortly so is there anything else you wanted to mention before we do 
Yeah, I guess so. The only other thing I would have thrown in there would have been that I would, I would just ask about is the, kind of the array of fonts that are used. Like, yeah. it feels like yeah. it kind of flicks between, like, Harry Potter font and then, like, Times New Roman or whatever. Like, it's really, yeah. like... There are quite quite a lot of um, different fonts being used, uh, definitely. And there's, um, there's also, I'd say... The visual hierarchy is quite hard to distinguish. I mean, that might be because it's quite monotone. There's also yeah. like yeah. there's not really any colors that are standing out to me. And I and potentially the the main call to action, which was kind of ad personalization for me, is quite recessive and easy to ignore. Would have liked to have yeah. seen that be in a stronger, bolder color, really jumping yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, I think but, yeah. It, it just generally gives me the vibe of like some, a website that obviously is like the licensed Harry Potter website that it, that it isn't, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's kind of like a bootleg <laughs> Harry Potter website a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it was. Um, I think there is some cool bits on it, but there's definitely some stuff that I would. Yeah. I would question around it, and I guess I think there's some things about kind of making it a little bit simpler and clearer, and just yeah, but could be worked on that. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. Um, well, this couldn't be more of a, a tone change from my your example to my example because you you've gone for super interesting magical uh, realism sort of uh, over realism. To, no, <laughs> minus minus more of the realism. So mine is the realism. So mine is like very other end of the spectrum, very practical. Um, so this is a website called acu.co.uk and they offer components for engineers so you can sell them so you can buy them rather in bulk online and this is their product page interestingly so this is the feature before i, I kind of talk about the whole page this is the feature i was just mentioning which i think is so neat and yeah, i cool. don't really see that very often on product pages for websites but i love it i think that for example, just going back to Harry Potter, that would be a really cool feature if you could spin the one like that and really study it in detail. And get is that, are you dragging that to do that, Jay? Sorry, no, I'm, so I'm, I'm literally sure click and drag. Yeah, and see, that's better as well. That's I think I'd prefer that over like the the zoom on the Harry Potter one. Obviously, it wouldn't have actually been clear before, but like that's just you yeah. literally have to hover over it, and it's just like yeah, zooms yeah. in. Yeah. Having that control, super, super detail. I imagine it's fairly lightweight as well because it's not a video; it's just lots of still images that have been. Um, give you the illusion of it being a video. So, I, I mean, the first thing to say about this page is it's obviously incredibly well designed, right down to every pixel that's been considered. And you can kind of see the engineering aspect of the company coming through and how the website's been designed because it feels like there isn't a, a millimeter of space that hasn't been sort of accounted for here. It's all very well, very precisely designed and engineered, uh, much like the components that they're selling. I also really love how they've kind of very strongly thought about the the hierarchy, but also the colors and how they're using colors on the page. But they have a very strong, prominent CCA color here with Add to Cart, which does stand out as well as Buy More and Save. So they've kind of stuck to the idea of, sim um, uh, of, of like salience and uh, um, simplicity when it comes to making sure it's obvious what to do next. It is it's clear what to do next, I think. The only part of this page which i feel like it potentially falls down on and what i would love to do if i was testing on this website what i would probably do is an alternative design which just gives the all the different areas and the components of the page more room to breathe so i think at the moment it is very um condensed and potentially you could you could argue a bit cluttered in terms of how much there is in a small space um so i would i would love to see what a slightly more um spread out or you know using using more white space what that design could look like and, and how that might um, perform compared to this design so that's quite nitpicky but i do think you know especially when you're considering the world of b2b um, engineering and and these kinds of websites that i wouldn't say are at the generally at the forefront of like ux best practice and web design that's not a slight it's just true i think that usually b2c websites are usually the ones that kind of lead the way on that because of how much attention they get and how many users are are using them uh, so it is really refreshing and nice to see that there's uh, sort of mostly a b2b website that's, that's had such a good um 
and considered design made for it. So yeah, those are my initial thoughts. There's loads more I could go into, but yeah. Um, also I think it's, I think it's good. I mean, immediately the first bits that jump out is the kind of, you know, the sizes of the screws, which mm. I think, like you said, like B2B normally has like the information, um, B2C, sorry, normally will have that information very upfront. Um, and B2B, maybe it's sometimes less obvious, but having, you know, worked in um, DIY kind of stores and stuff before, a lot of the time, like people who are going in are people that have that business as their tradies. And there's nothing more annoying than spending mm. about 40 minutes trying to find the right screw um, mm. <laughs> and trying yeah, to... Yeah. Yeah. and trying to have one and then maybe like guess guess the yeah. right length for the right um thread and so yeah it's good to have all of that kind of immediately up front yeah and then also being able to change the length of the screw you're looking at without leaving the page i think as well yeah that's good that's that like it's really so good. nice it's quite nice yeah. you've got that like custom customizable element yeah. almost like on that one page i think that's really handy because otherwise you'd be hopping about like mad on the website, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, and all so... the users look the same. <laughs> yeah. um, there's also just some really like there's some really nice touches around reassurance. Like they've got certified a certificate of conformity supplied a standard three year extended warranty reviews. Mm -hmm. you know, Fifty one reviews. That's quite a lot for yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it's a fairly niche yeah. product. Um, free technical support. So you've got if you know if something goes wrong or if you're not sure about how to use it, you can call them you know again they repeat this stuff and then also the fact that they've got such precise up-to-date numbers yeah, of they have in stock. it's so rare that you see that let, let alone um b2b b2c sometimes struggle to let you know i was gonna say stock. like i, I don't know because <laughs> as someone who um famously isn't a very good diy i don't often have to like <laughs> buy stuff like this um but it i i've hardly ever seen anything like that yeah. Yeah. From a stock live stock levels market. that precise that it's down to the yeah many, you know you know five they've got yeah in stock. no it's it's um it's i wasn't counting them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. imagine having that job that's not i, um... I mean my, my days of that job are over thankfully <laughs> yeah i I yeah I fully agree I think Joe that like you're over like I think the, the one thing is there is a lot going on there like there's a lot to mm -hmm. take in on the page I think they've done a pretty remarkable job of actually getting the amount of information they have on yeah. there like without mm -hmm. I agree it does look busy but mm -hmm. the amount of stuff they have got in like, the think, smash, yeah. yeah yeah like even including stuff like the the trust pilot rate and the stuff I managed to get visible and mm. the customer support like that little bar there as well as all of the actual product info yeah like there's a lot there but yeah I'd, it'd be interesting to, it'd be interesting to test that in like a yeah um yeah i guess simplified manner or more split out manner so there's a bit more space between things but yeah, yeah. and potentially the idea of making this this sort of sticky that would follow you down the page as you move. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good shout. But yeah, we'll have to have to leave that one behind. Um, but cool to dip into the world of B2B engineering every now and then. Right. So Amy, this is yours. I will yes. accept cookies and you can talk us through your thoughts. Yeah. So I was looking at Lush. I think immediately from a first impression, um, pot potentially from you know, a user going on, if you land straight on this page, it looks very kind of clean, which is nice. Um, kind of um, to contrast the last one, this one, I don't think this page is cluttered at all. Um, and it's, you know, the images are there, it's good. It's got a product video, which I always love, um, especially for B2C and something like this, where it's a bath bomb, you know, um, people love to you know people love to take the videos people love to see it and see how it goes um and so i think all of that is really good um there's a couple things that i would be interested to test on here um i think for example within that product video the water is already red when they put the bath in it and so i'm a bit <laughs> the bomb in it so i'm a little bit curious about mm. where the motivations behind that were um I think if you're including a video, people want to see the effect it has. And I think it kind of diminishes that a little bit. Yeah, um, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, yeah, one 
curiosity I had. Um, there's, I also think the product images are quite big, um, particularly on the mobile version of this page that I've looked at. You can imagine them being the same size. Um, it does take up quite a lot of the page and unfortunately pushes any CTA out from above the fold. Mm. Um, so I'd be interested to try try or kind of, you know, shrinking them down a little bit to make a little bit more room for some important features above above the fold um, and kind of moving, yeah, just some of those up so that they're immediately visible. Um, and same with, you know, the stuff that we just scroll past in the description, the whole vegan, um, cr like cruelty-free um, selling point, which I think is Lush's, you know, it's their main thing. It always has been. That's something they market themselves on very proudly. Um, but all of that's kind of tucked away in this version as well. And so I think, yeah, my main thing that I would like to test would just be kind of shrinking down those images and seeing what we can move up. Um, mm. It's potentially, it's clear, but it's, the page is clear itself and the actions are clear, but maybe it's a little bit too simple. Yeah. Um, and then some, some page layouts that you see in e-commerce, maybe this is more of a fashion trend but you see large images that aren't that pretty much similar similar sort of uh, ratio to these but they're more they take up sort of maybe one or two columns on the left rather than over yeah. half the page and then they kind of go quite far down which allows this right hand column over here to have more of the product detail so having yeah. almost like the product description stacked underneath the main cta or, or slightly further down so that you could, instead of having this kind of scrolling gallery, which I think I would I would be interested to see how many people actually use that scrolling um, ability yeah. is 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 actually more. It's just it's all of those images are stacked above each other on the left hand side. If that makes sense. Yeah, I do also think the images themselves are quite. You know, they're clearly just screenshots from the video um, that show you know the different stages of the bath yeah. bomb in the water. Um, I would be interested, you know, the product image on the right hand side of the page. I think that would be useful to include yeah. in that. I think it's much really point. Yeah. clearer, especially with the red background already on those images. The contrast isn't great. And so the accessibility might not necessarily be there. Yeah. Um, I've got I've got a question. What do you think of? So I've noticed a couple of things on this page around. So it's not immediately obvious to me like what this design decision around here. So they've kind of got this old school gaming um like 32 sort of pixel if that's the right generation yeah. of console yeah. design thing going on and and then also they it looks like they've changed i don't know if that's just for this page but they've changed the logo oh, to, yeah. Sort of yeah. Mimic, to mimic that style of design as well and, and this is potentially more of a broad statement around the website but they seem to make lots of design decisions which are around let's say like the um yeah, it's 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 uh, it's sometimes more design than function because I don't know if that's yeah. adding anything to the usability of the page, but it's definitely potentially they're trying to add yeah. a little bit more flavor. Well, I think I mean? the marketing sometimes seems to get a little bit almost carried away with some of the limited edition products they have. They yeah. do a lot of collaborations. Um, this product itself is limited edition, and which yeah. I think having you know that little tag there to say that is you know it's good and it's kind of creates a little bit more of that. Yeah. um incentive or that urgency but it doesn't really explain so yeah that kind of gaming thing that you mentioned i'm i mm. think that this bath bomb is part of their like minecraft collaboration oh, right my God. Which, first of all seems like quite a rogue um yeah. <laughs> a rogue we've brand heard, to, pair that up off, to be fair um, like, right, yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's also yeah it's just not it's not really made yeah. particularly visible on here yeah. and i think this is something that you know a company there's that tag there I would, do is, yeah yeah, they, they run with it quite a lot when they do mm. collaborations like this. And sometimes it's not always in the clearest way. Yeah. Um, I think one one interesting thing about this website is it it looks initially very simple and it looks like it should be clear and it loads and you're like, oh, there's no clutter. I can see the add to bag. That's great. And then it's little things when you start to kind of really pay attention to it. And once you start trying to use it, then it kind of becomes a little bit more obvious that there are things that aren't particularly clear. Um, so yeah, for example, the kind of line it's in the collaboration, I think the navigation is an interesting choice as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit curious about what sticky dates is. 
Um, yeah, but... I literally <laughs> think that. I literally I don't think that. that's I, intuitive. I'm, I'm not going to click on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm saying that right now. Um, I think it's, yeah, the navigation is certainly an interesting choice. Um, and yeah. so I'd be curious about that. Why um, would, if you had one test that you were going to test on this page to see if you could increase add to basket, what would, what would you test? Putting you on the spot I, here. I think it would be shrinking that, shrinking those images, yeah. um, moving more information above the fold, I think. Just having, yeah, yeah those key yeah. core kind of, lush usps of you know and well any information that's more than explosive bathing yeah two, um, two uh, product would be... scripts in there is <laughs> lovely yeah. stuff in there would be useful just shrinking those images and then it will pull some more valuable information up yeah. to be above the fold particularly on mobile which i would imagine is where most of um lush's customer base sits yeah 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 very cool interesting stuff i um yeah i'm I feel like the whole Minecraft reference is for for me. Obviously, it went over my head because I'm it's generationally I'm not part of that. that sort of. I do so also I, wonder. I, I looked at that and I assumed it was a reference to like '80s, let's say like SNES era console, which yeah. actually is probably what I grew up with. But anyway. I thought more um, Crash Bandicoot kind of. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I think they had something similar, but yeah, yeah. I do. That's why I kind of. I was curious about maybe how much the target demographics of Minecraft and Lush overlap. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be interesting, but, that but be. maybe that's why they're doing it. Maybe it's, yeah. Is the, um, is the add to bag only sticky to up to a certain point? Uh, yes, it's sticky oh, up yeah. to the end of the product description, then the ingredients. Oh, take, yeah, I mean, that's something that we haven't really discussed. I don't think we have time mm -hmm. really, but I do like how they're so, and this is kind of something that, again, is part of the USPs is how transparent they are with what the ingredients are. Yeah. It's you can yeah. actually you can dig into and learn more about, and I think that's. Do you that's think? Really... Do you think that's but a again... conscious decision to to do that, like to not have that add to bag, to not take away from like what's in it? Like, do you know what I mean? I, I wonder yeah, if it's like. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Okay. As much as we, I feel like we could discuss this for for much longer, we'll have to sadly leave it there. But. Um, just before we go, it's worth us, let me just stop sharing my screen. It's worth saying that we've got loads more that we want to talk about, loads more websites. We've just looked at product pages today because we wanted to just look at that specific part of the user journey, but there's the home page, there's the, uh, there's the basket page, there's the checkout page, there's category pages, there's specific types of websites. The list is endless, so we'd love to hear from you about what kinds of website pages or specific websites you'd like us to look at if it's yours even potentially we can we can have a look at your website um but for now i would also if you're looking for anything um from us any more information uh, we've got loads of actionable insights on our website you can go to um, our website and download we've got some very cool um downloads on there so launchonline.co.uk we've got a helpful guide on how to get on top of optimization which we will link to in the comments below uh, so you can find it there if you would like. Uh, so all that leaves for us to do is to say thanks for joining us today. Um, this has been really fun and hope you join us next time for some more CROs React.